Good day everyone and welcome right here to my page. Now, after my video last time, a lot of really matured people, I would say matured Christians, reached out to me in the DM and told me different narratives to the story about the person of Apostle Michael Oropo and Apostle Arum, Arume Osai. Um, today, I'm continuing the part two I mentioned in the part one that I was going to look at with regards to their relationship. And if you think that what I'm about to discuss with you now is going to sow some kind of discord in your mind, or if you're not here having an open mind to listen and be able to understand what I think I am seeing is going on, I think it's not a page for you to be in. Stop watching this video right now and move on to something else I believe would add more value to your time. But if you are in for this conversation, of which I'm also going to bring up the person of Pastor Abel Damina and Bishop Duncan Williams with a couple of comments they have made which had also helped me understand some things in this whole idea of spiritual fatherism, especially how it is in the African setting, which I'm going to look at again in another video. Stick around after the intro. Now, in the last video I made, I talked to you about um, Apostle Eromo Osai and Michael Oropo with a particular comment that Apostle Romo, Arome Osai might have made that I thought, or would I say, I think might have been directed to the person of Michael Oropo. If you have not watched the video before this one, I think you might have to watch it to understand where I am heading to. Because as we go on right now, I want to discuss something really important with you. In my last video, I mentioned the comments that Pastor Abel Damina had made about the spiritual fatherism as it is practiced in Nigeria. Just to remind you, this is what he said. What young preachers do is if they see that you have influence you have crowd, you have national acceptance. They now see you as a father. That's carnal. That's totally carnal. And that is why when you get to those fathers, they will now equate you by the weight of your tight. Your tight will determine your position in the relationship. Those who bring big, big tight are the ones that will sit close. And we relate close if your tight is small you are at the bottom of the line it's foolish real fatherhood is doctrine doctrine are we understand it's not popularity it's doctrine and some young ministers think when you come under a senior minister you can climb his shoulders to fly you don't need anybody's shoulders to fly. If you preach Christ well, Christ will open the world for you. Now, correlate that to what Duncan Williams said. Listen to this yourself. So, I want to show you something. Every generation, every generation from the Old Testament dispensation to the New Testament dispensation have always received impartation and the baton by the laying off of hands and by prophesying over you by the generation that came before you something has changed and switched in this generation this is a generation that won't respect and follow the others i was in an african country recently a very successful preacher came to see me and he wanted me to be his spiritual father and i asked him who's your spiritual father who covers you he mentioned the guy's name i don't know him and and i said but why do you want me to be your father he said, I believe it's time to move on. I said, I don't believe. You can't change your father. You don't name yourself. It's a father who gives you a name. It's a father who names you. A child is not born, come out of the mother. Yeah! My name is Ajua. The, the, uh, the, security, the, police, the doctors will call for security to come right now. Yeah. And I said, I'm sorry. I cannot. I can't be your father. And, and I realized that the reason why he wanted me to be his spiritual father is because he's seen my global impact and influence and he wanted somebody like me. And the reason is because his church has become bigger and successful than his spiritual father. But that doesn't make you under any circumstances equal or the same with him. Jesus said, greater works than I did shall you do. 
Jesus said, you shall do greater works than I, Jesus. Does that make you and I equal, bigger, and greater than Jesus? That doesn't make us Lord. It's, Jesus is still Jesus. Jesus is still our Lord. No matter what we accomplish and we do. So I told him, I'm sorry, I can't be your spiritual father. Stick with your spiritual father. Stick with him. Stick with him. Now, Joshua performed more, did more than Moses. Don't forget that. Elijah performed 14 miracles. The father performed seven miracles. But it didn't change the fact that Joshua had wisdom because Moses laid hands upon him. Deuteronomy 34. The Bible said, and Joshua was full of wisdom because Moses, the father, had laid hands upon him. Who laid hands on you? If you look at Old Testament dispensation, New Testament, it's the same pattern. It's through the laying off of hands and it's always by a prophetic statement and declaration being made over you by those who were before you and ahead of you. Now, looking at these two videos right now, of course, many of you were kind of would I say insulting me or would I say insulting the person of um, Pastor Abel Damina with regards to his comment because for a fact most of you Christians have relegated or decided who you call Christians or who you call men of God real or fake and let me warn you on this platform being real George is not here to define for you who is real or fake I present the facts I have to discuss discuss them extensively but you become the jury to decide who you want to follow or not my business right here is to discuss what I see on social media, but I don't define or label people in any way. If you don't understand this, please, this page again is not for you. But moving on right now, Apostle Aaron Mosai is someone that I respect his person and his ministry a whole lot with regards to most of his teachings. Most of these people, I consume their content because I have interest in um, Christian content most of the time. So it's in consuming these contents that I get to listen and hear these things and I'm trying to connect those to be more of like, what does this person mean here? What does this person mean here? So if you think you will sit down under administration and listen to an entire sermon without being like the Berians or go back to either search scripture or try to understand inferences of the person that you are watching, I wonder what kind of a Christian you are. Now, over time, in two instances I have seen where Apostle Arome Osai has talked about the person of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Real or fake, you know how we do things right here. And these are things that he had to say on two occasions about him. Let's change the goalpost of salvation because of a philanthropist. We no longer understand the, the basic tenets of our belief system. For your information, um, the man in question was a soothsayer. And it was a spirit of divination that was at work. Yes. I, I know this in the spirit. And I've seen many of his victims come to this place for deliverance. I have been in the struggle. Yes, I speak from the struggle. May the Lord give you an answer. Father, how do we handle the issue of Yahoo boys in the land? Any church funded by Yahoo people is not the church. It's an infectious center to infect people to be immunized against the real gospel. So we have such infectious centers, not just in Benin City, not just in Delta State, but we have infectious centers spread across the nation. And this priesthood of infectious centers is a long line of inheritance that was drawn from a certain false prophet that um, used to operate in the city of Lagos. That false prophet was able to do everything he did in ministry without recognizing the lordship of Jesus and his ability to bring salvation. Are you, are you with me? You are not with me. You are now sober. You see, part of our job is to fight for the destiny, for the fate of the gospel. Because there are going to be many attempts to derail the gospel. For the gospel to be held in bad light. So that people's hearts will be close to it. That's what I mean by infectious centers. Several things that goes down to ensure that people's reception of the gospel is so beclouded and the, 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 the gospel is suspect. 
This so-called prophet always claims that his salvation experience was that he was born, saved in a mother's womb. That's the one. Meanwhile, he, he could have lied that on social day he gave his life to Christ. Those of you that stayed in Lagos, that know Lagos in the 80s, the man was a white government prophet by the Babbage. And he used to use chicken and all those things to cleanse people. He used to do spiritual baths by the Babbage. And then his testimony of salvation was that he was saved in his mother's womb. Because he never made a mistake to acknowledge Jesus as the Savior. Now the second occasion was him talking about, if you remember the video I made about the whole concept of Yahoo Boys and all that. In the process of him talking about churches being funded by Yahoo Boys or fraudsters, the example he had for his explanation was talking about the person of T.B. Joshua. Except you don't think he's talking about it. TB Joshua in that particular video. People were seated under that administration. Even the windows himself was the one that asked that question. That means whether you like it or not, the Christianity we have in Nigeria has different sects and everyone has a particular mindset. Right now, if you look at the comments, you see people saying, hey, George, don't talk about TB Joshua or TB Joshua is this or this person is this or this person is that. You can define or you can say this person is of God, this person is not of God amazingly well congratulations but you see most of these people themselves have people that follow them and believe in them but yes still just to be as plain as possible this is another pastor calling out another pastor in whatever way or whatever manner why am i even bringing the person of prophet tb joshua right here late of course it's because his significance and person in the quote-unquote African Christendom is very controversial, especially when you hear many pastors or like, of course, Apostle Arome would say that he claimed that he was born again from the mother's womb or something. Now, I have been trying to find that particular video. In case you find the video of him saying that, please link it for me in the comments. I want to really, because I mean, I've been trying to find that fact so that I'll be able to really understand where all of this is coming from. Apostle Arome Osai may actually be correct in what he's saying about the person of TB Joshua. But let me, look, let me tell you something really significant here. Looking at the person of Apostle Michael Oropo, who used to be, some people say he's still the son of Apostle Arome Osai. You people know too well because you are insiders. But of course, some insiders, of course, have also told me that now nah, they are no more connected in the whole idea of spiritual fatherism or soninism. You understand what I'm saying? I watched a video where Apostle Michael Oropo was talking about his journey into ministry and how he was able to discern different men with regards to who he is today. As Apostle Michael Oropo, you know him. I want you to listen to this particular video. I'll be back with a couple of comments. Everything God did for me, He did for me through men. Everything. I had an encounter with Jesus as a young boy. But for many years, I was nothing. When I met Pastor Chris Oyakilome, I honored the grace upon the man. And somehow, an oil began to flow through my life. I pray for the sick. I know I don't have faith. And they are healed because I encountered somebody. When I met Bishop David Oedeko, the scriptures came alive. I could quote 50 scriptures in a moment. And then when I look at the scripture, I see what ordinary people don't see. Because that investment is not in heaven, it's in a man called Oedeko. When I met Apostle Arome Osai, I couldn't go out to preach. Who, who cares about you? But all of a sudden, people hear one message and it goes viral. And they say, come here, come here, come here. What is happening? I didn't do publicity anywhere. That grace for influence was invested in a man. And as I discerned this man, these things kept flowing. Now, if you listen to him very clearly, even towards the end of that video, he talked about, oh, people will say, people will say, why do we always talk about men? So when I talk about the fact that many, many quote-unquote, men of God preach themselves to show you their relevance to who they are, just like how Apostle Arome Osai would always say, show me T.B. Joshua's spiritual father or where he come from or who he's submitting to and all that. But later in the next video, I'll be looking at this whole spiritual fatherism in a whole, in a deeper level for you to see some things that 
the pastors or your pastor knows, but you yourself, who is quote and unquote a believer, do not know what your pastors understand. Because the essence of this is to demystify everything that happens in the church so that you yourself as a Christian would have a basic understanding of these things. So when you see them, you can recognize them. So if you listen to what my Apostle Michael Oropo said there, it's similar to like, you see, when you hear Apostle Joshua's sermon every time, maybe they have read all of these books of God generals and sometimes they will just be preaching about this general, this general, this pastor, this pastor, this happened here, this happened here. I can trace this all the way back to even the person of Bishop Benson Idahosa of Blessed Memory. I'm going to bring some videos from the archives and we get to discuss them so you see where the root of all these things come from and why it will keep passing on from generation to generation. Look at the comments now. You see people themselves even fighting and arguing over whose spiritual father, my father, this and that. Oh, God will do this to you. You, I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with these comments because I, I know what I'm expecting even as I'm shooting the video. But moving on, you see the way he talks about how he has been here, Chris Yakilome, you know, Oyedepo. And when he came to his own launch into ministry, or would I say his exposure, at least he gave credit to the person of, of Apostle Arome Osai. And indeed, when he looked, when you talk about the person of Michael Oropo, indeed, to a great extent, his significance and relevance came greatly from the person of Apostle Arome Osai. If not, why didn't he just stay with Pastor Chris? That is if Pastor Chris knows him. Why didn't he just stay with um, Bishop Oyedepo if he knows him? You understand? But someone that actually knew him, spoke about him, made him no, now would I say drew his hand and be more of like, you know, go here for me, son, go here for me, son, is Apostle Erome Osai. So, if you had watched my previous video and you still think that that statement was not about Apostle Michael Oropo, I think you might have to think again. But anyway, let's just assume it is not about him, okay? So, for those who think it's not about him, I think you have peace right now. Because as we go on right now, what I'm trying to make you understand right here is that. If you, if you can infer his relevance from the person of Apostle Erome Osai, and looking at what Apostle Erome Osai says about the person of Bishop of, of T.B. Joshua, there's also someone else in the mix, Hubert Angel. Yes, of course, Embassy of God himself. Now, he used to be a spiritual son to this man, but right now he has decided to, I guess, adopt himself to be a spiritual son to Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Uber Angel has a whole lot of respect for the person of Prophet TV Joshua. That he attacks anyone that gets to speak about him. Let me just show you some something he said in the past about the person of TV Joshua and those who talk about him. I'm talking about a life after 1 September. Yes. <laughs> Imagine if you die after you have announced it. Did TB just want to tell them? Uh -huh. He said, there is a time to preach. There is then a time to go home. He dropped his mic. He said, there is a time to go home to the Lord who sent you. And he dropped the mic. And went into his room. Slept and never woke up. The video is there. You can move around. TB Joshua was not in this one. TB Joshua. If you have never won souls like that man, shut up. I so get enraged by little non-entities, nincompop, silly little prophets in courts. You're not even a prophet. How dare you can castigate people like T.B. Joshua. Just because you found a, a, an account on YouTube and Facebook. Say, so yes, I have a prophetic word. What they are doing, let this go on. Ay, ay, ay. You, you don't own one square meter. We got, people can sit and hear you speak about what God has said. But you want to cast get a prophet? Who are you? Amazing. Now that was not addressed to the person of Apostle Aroma Osai, I would say, to be precise. But of course, you know Apostle Aroma Osai has a very strong um, opinion about a person 
of TB Joshua. In case you think that in the previous videos I just played for you right now that he wasn't talking about TB Joshua as well, because I will see some people saying that in the comments, listen to this other video where he gets to talk about him and mentioning synagogue. Because many of you here have gone to altars of divination because unknowingly and you have injured your destiny. Is there anybody here that has gone to synagogue? Maybe you went on pilgrimage. Be bold, be bold, so that we can pray. Okay, there are two people that have gone to. Be, make it. No. Okay, I'm not doing it again because you are not. It's you that has problem. Yeah. <laughs> now, that man of synagogue, you might say it's jealousy. We, what have I seen? See the way he's moving. Me. It's not. Before you call somebody a prophet, we should be able to ask you. You are not a prophet except you have sat there for 10 years, minimum. We need to ask, who did T.B. Joshua grow under? Do you know? Because he did not come from the church. It's people that stayed in Lagos earlier, in Lagos, you will know how he came. He used to, they used to sacrifice at the bad beach, chicken and animals. Him, that man. And there was never a time he gave his life to Christ. From that one, he now started church. And then became senior prophet. And then gullible Christians that are available for sacrifice are going to visit. Yeah, all of them are available. Anybody that goes there is, is available for sacrifice. He's not useful to himself, so he's available for sacrifice. Became a senior prophet. And all he's doing is running that show on the spirit of divination. The devil will give you something and he doesn't expect you to maintain a certain character in order for you to maintain it. No. If, you, if it's divination you're operating with, you won't need to live holy. In fact, in fact, divination is serviced by an altar of immorality. So in Agrabi, they have something like prophecy there, but it's suits saying. Now, you see, I present these facts for you to really, really understand what it is I'm driving at right now. So think about this for a moment. If Uber Ranger would be talking about the person, or what I say, his recent discussion as at the time this video I'm about to play to you was released with the person of Apostle Michael I was, I was uh, having a discussion with them. Um young young apostle coming up i'm telling i'm telling you on fire for god uh it's called apostle michael Oroko. very powerful very very powerful and i said see the, the the church now is lacking men and women of god who actually understand the spiritual realm as a spiritual realm as a realm you know you understand where you see the spiritual realm and say this is spiritual realm you know the scriptures that are there a way kind of vague when you read them more of like giving a public endorsement of him and this is the same Hubert Angel that is how holds TB Joshua to a very high extreme and extent and this is the same person that Apostle Michael Oropo was celebrating or would I say talking about his union with him on his birthday and the things he said about him with his celebrate aspect you today of his you have been a special daddy. messenger of god to a generation the impact of your life and ministry have affected the body of christ in such a positive way that cannot be measured or quantified you have shifted the prophetic ministry to another level your prophetic accuracy and apostolic authority coupled with excellence and dexterity have really really revolutionized the, the prophetic ministry and we are so delighted to receive of your ministry in this generation your sonesis of the word of god and depth in the things you of the spirit the video in my last video before this one ask yourself a question do you think Apostle Arome Osai, if he's a spiritual father of Apostle Michael Oropo, would be okay that his own spiritual son is in association with someone like Prophet Obat Angel? Think about that for a moment. Let that sink into your skull. Because the, pro the point of this video right now is just for you to see that when I talk about relevance by association and the association that pastors themselves keep amongst each other, there are cliques you don't see. There are associations you don't see. There are cartels, or would I say camps you don't see. A cartel is not a good word. There are camps you don't see. So you can easily infer a particular pastor, a particular man of God's um, 
position on things and all that based on his associations. But of course, Apostle Michael Robo made us understand or give a very open statement which makes it possible not to put him on that scrutiny with regards to those he associates with. And he talked about the fact that the reason why he mixes up with people that are fake and all that is because he's not a pastor, he's a revivalist. So he's actually there for a mission right here in the Christendom. Can Apostle Michael Robo say that the Hubert Angel that he speaks of so highly and all that, who is connected to the person of TB Joshua, and, and Hubert Angel goes against anybody that gets to talk against TB Joshua? Can he say that Hubert Angel is fake? According to him, of course he can say that. Don't think of this as a discord. Just look at association so you can get to understand what I'm talking about. Because if you don't, if you say that you associate with anyone, because you are a revivalist. I don't know where that comes from in the fivefold ministry, but let's assume that um, you are a revivalist as you have said, and you are in the body of Christ to mix up with everyone so that you get to, of course, you said in your video that you have no name, so no one knows you. Are you doing all this and associating with different people and all that so you can build attention for yourself, or what would I say, for you to be known or put in a particular class? I don't know, but I guess you know better. So, of course, Apostle Michael Europa also has or is now beginning to have sons. So, maybe we can look at him also in that cadre of people that are fathers, I would say. Spiritual fathers, yes, of course. But what do I want you to understand right here in this video? Again, I would say there might be no rift between them. Apostle Arome Osai must have has made public statements without mentioning the name of Apostle Michael Ropo, but can't be inferred to be about him. But right now, as I'm speaking to you, is Apostle Arome Osai, if he's for those who believe that he's still the spiritual father of the person of Apostle Michael Ropo, is he pleased with his associations in ministry? Because the father is supposed to watch over or would i say like that can william to put it have a covering over the sun is he pleased with what is happening right now with apostle michael robo but let's hey hey hey, hey listen apostle michael robo has every right on his own path to associate with anyone he wants to associate with of course he's a grown man a married man he's a, a father in his own respect of course he has sons right now who are also apostles imparted by him indeed Everyone has a right to do whatever they want to do. But the fact right here is that I see that something is wrong, even though that thing being wrong doesn't change or affect the fact that the body of Christ still remains united. But when you see fact and see truth, you speak about them. Because if they are still drawing relevance from each other, or would I say if Michael Oropo is still drawing a whole lot of relevance with, from his association with Apostle Romeo Osai, and he's doing things that um, would not be seen to be something that Apostle Aroma Osai would do, or is saying things that would not easily be ascribed to the person of Apostle Aroma Osai, or I say, seem to be an endorsement from him. I think it's important that people know that maybe at this point, whatever Apostle Michael Aropo does, says, however he gets to operate his ministry, has no affiliation with the person of Apostle Arome Osai. Do we have an understanding? Of course, Michael Oropo is running his own ministry, so of course, it's very, very clear. But even at that, I want you to listen to this prophecy that was given to Apostle Michael Oropo by someone else who is also a prophet that came across that here on YouTube. And this is what he was saying to Apostle Michael Oropo. the fuller's house, the house of soap, the place of washing, stay there, the washing by the waters, it's your lot, don't be in a hurry, there's a difference between speed and haste, there's a difference between greatness and fame, fame is cheaper than greatness, the meaning of greatness is deep, it is natural for us to want greatness. The disciples of Jesus said to themselves, who shall be greatest? 
they were 12 chosen out of millions. They still had that issue. It is natural. It was 12 people carefully chosen. One of them was a thief. How did he become a thief? And Satan, and Satan entered. How did he enter? He opened. He has not the 11 door, the 12 door, he opened. Do not open. You are in the fuller's house. That's your place. You are in the place of soap, of washing, of cleansing. Do it regularly. Bring the soap to people. Bring the waters to people. Wash by the word. By the waters of the word. Wash. That's where you are. That's where you are. Do not be in a hurry. There's a difference between haste and speed. There's a difference between pace and stride. You are not in the league of us men that are in a race. You are not running with them. You are taking your time. You are walking in your day. You are walking in your life. You are not in the race. You are sent. Not only sent, you are given. Publicly, I would say. Now, does that ring some bells to you? Because last time I made a comment in my previous video talking about speed and all that. But of course, it doesn't mean that Apostle Michael Ropo would have to be on the Apostle Romo's side forever. Sometimes you have to fly. He has walked maybe for so long, now he wants to fly. And I wish him all the best. I wish all of them all the best in their respective ministries. As the body of Christ becomes stronger and stronger in faith. But if this all of this is for fame, attention, on anyone's part, let love itself always lead, like I would say. Because above all things, love should be the principal thing in all of these things that happen. But when you see them, or when I see them, I talk about them. But you could tell me what you think in the comments, by the way. And I hope to see you next time in my video as I get to go deeper in the concept of spiritual fatherism. And some things I'm going to share with you are so going to shock you so much that you will be wondering, George, why are you doing this? I'm doing this so you get to be informed. Because how informed you are defines how transformed you can be. Don't say you never knew. Tomorrow you will say, yes, I knew because George told me something like this. And look at this tweet I put out recently. Read it <laughs> because I'm reading all of your comments. See you next time in my video. I remain your one and only Being Real George. Comrades, bye bye. Elijah, Elijah.